My name is Tabitha Delangelo and I'm an assistant professor in elementary and early childhood education. I started using blogs with my class to provide my students an opportunity to do reflections on their field placements. I wanted to give my students an opportunity to write about what they were witnessing in the classroom in a low stakes format where it was really the ideas that were important and not so much the quality of writing or the grammar or the punctuation. I also loved the idea of blogging because they were able to comment on each other's work. Um, and what happened after a short time is Education Week picked up our blog and added it to their blogging site. So now my students blog is part of a national website where lots of other teachers also have their blog. The wikis we also use in our classes, we use them to share information about uh, both what we're doing, what we're reading. I actually have three students who are going to be doing a summer um, independent study and their independent study is to take what they know about adolescent development and create three short podcasts that could be used for classes in the future. My name is Jennifer Wang. I'm an associate professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering and my specialty is in the field of robotics. I apply the robotics technology in the courses of fundamental of engineering design, mechatronics, robotics. I have students work with me on autonomous vehicle and uh, climbing robots. In terms of senior design projects, students also work on autonomous vehicle, they work on humanoid robot that can talk with people and can recognize people. Students develop a robot we call Artbot that can create original work of art. The students use sensors, microcontrollers, actuators, and programming language and uh, hardware software. The autonomous vehicle, basically the robot can avoid obstacles on its way to the goal and it can follow the path a predefined path. Hello, I'm Dr. Orlando Hernandez and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. We're trying to give robots more of a psychological meaning to the way that they interact and in that they interact with humans and with their environment. Robotics is just a, an expression of embedded systems in which you have computing doing tasks that interact with the environment in a very different way than what we know as a PC or a laptop. So robots are a very special instance of embedded systems. Everything that we see and interact with are embedded systems from cell phones to the refrigerators today that have integrated technology to measure all kinds of data. So robots are one kind of that. This is a type of technology that can be taken from engineering all the way back to the higher school level to start attracting students to engineering. My name is Chris Alts and I'm an assistant professor. I teach a number of courses in the interactive multimedia program. I've been doing a lot of consulting lately with Nokia about this question of how to make all the information that's out there on the web accessible to people with varying disabilities. They might be completely blind or have other visual impairments or motor impairments or cognitive impairments. How can we build websites in a way that they can get at the information that everyone else is getting at? I also, from an artistic angle, am looking to uh, expand an idea that I've executed in a couple projects over the last couple years. Um, it's an idea I call responsive art. I really approach that as if that is a frame for a painting. Uh, the difference is that that painting can change and respond to input from various sources. As part of the IMM program, we teach a video game development course. It's actually a, a two-course sequence, and it's a really good example of how we emphasize interdisciplinarity in the interactive multimedia program. Um, it's a convenient vehicle, video games, for us to uh, talk about the effectiveness of soundtrack and sound design to bring in music faculty in that regard. To talk about story development and character development along those lines, bring in faculty from the English department to emphasize the importance of storytelling in games. And also, of course, to 
talk about coding and, and more traditional computer science questions, artificial intelligence, and therefore uh, Ursula Wolls has been the driving force behind the course, and, and she's coming from computer science. And also to talk about things more from an arts angle, uh, doing concept art uh, on paper for the characters, and then ultimately modeling them in 3D in the computer and doing background art. and and all those things. So it's a really nice way to bring all these different aspects of interactive multimedia, all these different areas that inform interactive multimedia, together literally in one classroom. My name is Andrea Selgen. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science. One of the projects that we're working on is understanding the, the gestures of a musical conductor and this is a work that we're doing together with Dr. Teresa Nakra from the Department of Music. What we're doing is that we're using the video footage of the conductor and looking at the gestures that the conductor makes because this is how the conductor communicates, it's the gestures. So the challenge here was to find a number of gestures that are enough for the actions that you can perform in a game. Once we define this vocabulary of gestures, then be able to recognize those gestures from a video sequence. This is the first step in, in a face recognition uh, a system where it, it finds the face and, and the eyes and then it aligns the face, it crops the image around the face so that the recognizer can take over and if the recognizer has seen that face before then it can actually provide the name and say okay this is the face of X. My name is Brian Biteman, I'm a graduating senior. Uh, this is a student investment fund where we basically run a College Health Trust uh, from donations and different monies that come in. It's all run by students presenting different investment ideas and strategies in terms of how to run the fund. In terms of technology, we're really big on using Bloomberg. Uh, the new terminal that we had gives us like real in-depth knowledge of the different markets and securities that we evaluate throughout the course. Anyone can come in and register to use the Bloomberg terminal. It's really easy. Throughout the day, whenever it's available, you can come in and use the service. Hi there, I'm Teresa Nakra and I'm an assistant professor of music at the College of New Jersey. I was interested in how new technology could transform classical music and so I was lucky enough to get into MIT, into the Media Lab. And so I spent seven years at the MIT Media Lab learning about ways in which that sensors and new technologies can be sensitively incorporated into music making on the stage. If we could use the, the baton as a triggering mechanism put some sensors into it and some intelligence into it, you could actually use the baton to conduct the entire opera, not just the music, but also the lights and the sets and other things. The conductor's jacket is a slightly different idea. Instead of putting the sensors in the conductor's baton, the idea was, what about the conductor's body? We put sensors on the muscles, the breathing apparatus, and on the heart of a conductor to measure what actually was happening to them physiologically while they were conducting. There are basically three things you can do with this kiosk. You pick up this Wiimote, which is the game controller. It's got accelerometers in it, so it's measuring how much force you're using when you wave it around. You can move it around with a lot of force, and the faster you move it, the faster the video plays. So basically what you're doing is you're controlling what we call the tempo of the orchestra. If you happen to be moving it in beats, in actual beats, then the orchestra will sync to your beats. And the third thing is, if you make really forceful gestures, like use a lot of effort, then they'll play louder. Sort of like conducting, but not quite as mm, sort of a close one-to-one -one match, um, but, but still more sort of a global sense of being able to control the speed and the volume of the playback system.